Take a look at this. Well, well. Now here's a fine haul. Scout ship said <laughs> Looks like you like this island. Fly free, noble hawk. Hunt to your heart's content, Grocky. Grocky?
We're here. What now? Well, so I've been thinking about Earth Pulse points. They're where the flow of the Earth Pulse, the Earth's natural forces, are concentrated. Right. And Inominat is using those points to acquire malevolence and reawaken himself. You seem to have a knack for sensing them out. Once you're close enough, you can even pinpoint their location. Except, I don't have to be close at all. When we came here yesterday, I felt another place. A place just like this. Are you saying you can use this Earth Pulse Point as a conduit to find the others? I think so. I don't know how far it works, and I can't say if Ethereum will be on the other end. Still, it'll give us something real to go on. Please, give it a try. Okay. Anything? Yes, I felt it. There are dozens of Earth Pulse points scattered around, but I sensed a few big ones that stood out. So you can even detect their size? Yeah, at least I think I can. This island is one of the big ones. There are two more like it somewhere to the east and the southeast. But I think those are the Warg Forest and the Temple of Palamedes. Still... That suggests we're more likely to find Therians at the larger Earth Pulse points. We've got three Therians to go. Anything that helps us narrow down our choices is a boon. Yeah, you've done great work today, Lafayette. That's for sure. Thank goodness you're here. You're a marvel. One of the wonders of the world, kiddo. It's not that big of a deal, really. Hmm. Then let's go Therian hunting. We have an honest to goodness lead, or dishonest to badness in our case. Broke again. Still not good enough. You think it's your swords that are weak? You don't think maybe your body's just stupid tough? No. If it can't cut me, it's just not good enough. I need stronger materials to make a better sword. I'd love to try Orichalcum, but getting that stuff is next to impossible. Orichalcum. That's the strongest metal in the world, right? A rare metal that's only been found in ancient ruins, and seldom at that. I've seen fragments of the metal myself. But I've never even heard of a piece large enough to forge into a weapon. I have. I heard a rumor that a block of orichalcum was discovered in an ancient ruin some 200 years ago. Unfortunately, the boat carrying it sank in a storm. From the depths of the earth to the depths of the sea. A sunken ship. Treasure at the bottom of the sea. <sighs> that would stir any sailor's heart. If we knew where to find it, could it be salvaged? The ship's crew drowned, so nobody knows where she sank. Besides, it's a centuries-old rumor. Who's to say it's even true? Right. <laughs> no sense in wishing for what can't be gotten. I'm sure there's other material you can use. <laughs> even Dial makes a good point sometimes. Hey, what do you mean, even Dial? Even Dial's getting angry! Saying it like that's just weird, Kamoana. Even Kamoana is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our target is an Earth Pulse point about as big as the one here. Let's start with the closest one and go from there. Which way is it? The closest one is to the west. Got it. Lead the way, Lafayette. My pleasure. I think I'm finally getting the hang of cooking without testing the taste. You know, I've always thought you were a really good cook, Velvet. It's not so hard. All you have to do is follow the recipe. After my sister died, I always did the cooking. 
The most important thing is adding just the right amount of salt, and the final adjustments of flavor. Oh, and once you're just about done, you have to make a wish that it turns out tasty. You wish for flavor? Yeah, so long as you do that, anything will turn out tasting good. Salika taught me that. It sounds like your sister was quite the master chef. Oh, I don't know about that. But now I'll never be her match. I've lost my taste, sure. But I've also forgotten what it even feels like to taste something delicious. What I make isn't really food. It's merely sustenance. I don't think that's true, Velvet. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is great! You're a fine chef, Velvet. I just remembered something my sister said. She always wished for our food to taste good, because she wanted to see us happy when we ate it. Oh? <laughs> and she said I ate like a pig, too. I... I don't think you do. It's a good thing. You should eat a lot, too, so you can grow up big and strong. Let me ask you something. More complaining, is it? Come on, don't be like that. Every time I turn around, Velvet or one of the pirates is telling me to go make some delivery to some island. I can never get a break. Isn't that just a sign they think you're a dependable guy? Maybe, but I don't see them sending you off on errands. It's like they take one look at your face and decide to leave you alone. I don't have a face. Oh, right, sorry. The slip of the tongue. Maybe you just don't know how much work I do around here. It's more than you think. Anything to do with iron, I do it. Making tools, repairing things. What do you take me for? Some kind of cheeky freeloader? I don't even have cheeks. <laughs> You're too funny. But doesn't it ever annoy you to have all these kids giving you orders? I've spent my entire life thinking of nothing but forging swords. It's been centuries since I've interacted with youngsters like them. They can be a hassle, but at least it's a new hassle. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, so I went along with whatever they asked. But I've been too nice, so they keep pushing work onto me. Maybe if I hadn't been so helpful, they would have stayed out of my face like they stay out of yours. I don't have a face. That's not the point. Aren't you even listening to what I'm saying here? You need to make up your mind. You and I got on this ship alongside these people, who are putting themselves in great danger in order to live the lives of their choosing. If you don't like it, then go on and get off this ship with your tail between your legs. Yeah, except I don't have a tail right now. was made by... Wow! It took them decades! You always look so happy when you've got your nose in a book. What's so interesting about the one you've got there? It's a book about surveying. When I read it, I can imagine myself traveling afar and making maps of the world. It sounds like so much fun. I know just how you feel. I know Mogilu and the others don't understand. 
But I just can't help but feel excited when I think about us completing a map of the entire world. It's the thought of treasure that gets me more fired up! Obviously, there's treasure waiting to be unearthed too, but that's more of a bonus on the side. Crossing uncrossable oceans, going to lands where none have gone before, the voyage itself, the dance with death, these things hold value greater than that of any treasure. Ah, uh, adventure! Truly the romance of the quest we call life. Laffy said you had a map, didn't you? The one you dropped when we first met? It's a world map I got when I was with the Abbey, but I only checked out the places really close by. I could hardly call it adventure. There's more to adventuring than visiting far-off lands and sailing stormy seas, you know. Adventures are about achieving your ambitions and leaping across the walls we've built to protect ourselves, no matter the danger that waits on the other side. There are no big or small adventures. Even if I only went to Helavis and the Fegal Ice Caps? Think of it like this. When you sneaked out of town without the Abbey noticing, when you walked the land and compared it to your map, how did that make you feel? It was scary, but fun. Exhilarating. Then it was an adventure. The map you made within yourself is a treasure that's only yours. Wow! My very own treasure! The second he has a spare moment, he buries himself in his books. Knowledge opens up bigger worlds. I imagine that back when Teresa was bossing him around, reading was a fun escape, an adventure in and of itself. Hmm? What's up, you guys? You're reading a pretty hard book there, aren't you? This? It's about dinosaurs. It says that long before humans were around, these huge creatures ruled the world. There are so many different kinds, like Tyrannosaurs and Triceratops and Brachiosaurs. They're all so cool. They look like dragons to me. They look similar, but dinosaurs couldn't live inside volcanoes, and they didn't do well in the cold either. But they were crazy huge and strong. Nothing else could even compete with them. I bet they would have made for great sparring partners. I think this Gigantospinosaurus might be my favorite. Those two huge points jutting out from both sides of its body make it look just like you and your two swords. Actually, it's also known as the dual-bladed dragon. Wow, it really does sound like a perfect match for me then. Okay, so if they weren't dragons, what were they? They look a lot like lizards. Maybe they're like my ancestors or something. But you used to be a human. <laughs> Damn. I think I might have gotten a bit too used to this new body of mine. I wonder if their tails can fall off too. I lost a bet to a young man, and he dared me to prove my courage by sailing out to a Class 4 island. Now, I could handle myself, but man, it ain't fun and games there. I nearly got killed by demons. You actually stepped foot on a Class 4 island? Not even. I was still approaching it by ship when this stuff that looked like spider silk started spreading round. These bug-looking demons were using the stuff to try and climb aboard my ship. Damnation! The crew cut those threads as fast as anything, and we got the hell out of there. The whole thing left me bawling. Well, I'm glad to see you made it out safely. I'd suggest not going near there again. <laughs> oh no, I wasn't planning on it. I had enough of that place to last me a lifetime. I understand why the Abbey turned this island into a prison. The waters here are filled with rapid sea currents. Make a single wrong turn of the rudder, 
and your ship will be capsized just like that. Not to mention the fog and all the storms that pass by. It must be nearly impossible to escape. Aye. To get on and off this island, you'd need a vast store of nautical knowledge and a skilled hand. Thanks to your curse, Eisen, we've gotten good enough to handle rough seas like this. The storm that kicked up when we made our escape was huge, and all we had were three novice sailors. Thinking back on it, we had some seriously good luck. <laughs> Take a look at this. Well, well. Now here's a fine haul. Scout ship setting sail. That crest. Children's clothes. More odd junk, huh? She's so pretty. This design... could it really be...? A lovely stone. I should try cutting it. Oh, that's a fine piece.
A pendant? Nothing of any worth to me. The first mate told me we're going to be looking for an Earth Pulse thingy, right? The ship's ready to leave whenever. Do you want to depart now? It's here! This is the Earth Pulse point! Nothing but open water as far as the eye can see. Is your Earth Pulse point down below? Uh, no. Most of this world is covered by ocean, so of course there'd be a lot of Earth Pulse points in the deep sea. But surely even the Abbey would have a hard time containing Aetherian underwater, right? Looks like this one's a bust then. Sorry, everyone. Hold on. We've seen a bug Therian. You don't think there could be fish as well? You may have a point. I think I have just a solution for this. You do? This. What? what? Don't give me that look. I'll have you know this is Fujibayashi's rod. This baby's nine feet long, made from a single piece of the finest bamboo aged five years, with a slow 60-40 action that almost feels alive when it bends. Its exquisitely wrapped handle feels like an extension of your own arm. And just look at that elegant black lacquer finish. It's as perfect a fishing rod as there can be. I'm sure it's a lovely fishing pole, but... Fishing? Are you sure? This is Aetherian we're talking about. All the more reason. Remember who you travel with. Uh, okay? Alright, if no one else will, I'm going to veto this fishing idea. Aw, oh, come on, let's give it a shot. Besides, I'm hungry. Even if all we catch is fish, at least we'll have dinner. Mm, I'd love to have me some koi or sockeye salmon. Don't encourage them. How do you attach the hook to the line? Like... this? <laughs> you don't go fishing much, do you? It's just been a while. I used to go fishing with my brother sometimes. This is my first time. Then we can try it together. I'll teach you how it's done. I didn't know you could fish, Eleanor. Yeah, when I was little, old man Tenny taught me. He was from my village. I've caught at least a hundred tree at loaches over the years. Wow! That's a lot of fish! Those two really get along. If I didn't know better, I think she's his sister, not his vessel. Eleanor certainly got Lafayette's number. Better watch out, Velvet, or she'll steal him away. Lafayette. Let's get the line set up properly. First, you take it and thread it through the hook, like so. That looks hard. Hey. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do it with your eyes shut. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Luffy! Huh? You mean me? Oh, um, I was just... Be careful there. Wouldn't want you falling into the water or anything. I'm not a little kid, you know. It's just that Luffy fell in once. A long time ago. Lofi? You mean your younger brother? That's right. You reminded me of him is all. If you say so. Is that all you wanted to say to me? 
Yeah, that's it. Okay then. I'm going back to fishing with Eleanor. Mm -mm. People aren't as easily swapped in and out as fish hooks, are they? Is that supposed to mean something? Oh, Velvet, uh, you gotta get it a lot tighter than that. Here, let me take a look at it. Huh? Oh, uh, all right. <laughs>